Hi there, it's Mark McDonald from apneatreatmentcenter.com. In this quick video, I'm going to cover sleep apnea symptoms. And after the video is over, you can tell if you have sleep apnea yourself. But first, a little bit about me. Um, first of all, my wife and father both have obstructive sleep apnea. I started researching apnea treatments in 2008 when my wife started gagging in her sleep, um, which is one of the classic symptoms of sleep apnea. At that point, I started researching um, apnea treatments. And since then, I've uncovered dozens of treatments, many which, of which family doctors don't even know about because they don't have the time um, to focus on these sorts of things. And, and my focus has been on treatments that don't involve CPAP, the, uh, CPAP because my wife, first of all, would never tolerate CPAP because she gets claustrophobic. And, and I know a lot of other people hate wearing the mask for obvious reasons. And uh, my site is www.apneatreatmentcenter.com. Please do check it out. I've got lots of free information on there for alternative sleep apnea treatments, how to get diagnosed, side effects, and many, many more. So let's jump in. First of all, some sleep apnea statistics. Um, it's estimated that 18 million American adults are affected by sleep apnea, and about 10 million of these are undiagnosed cases. So what's the deal? Why are there so many undiagnosed cases? Well, many of these cases go undiagnosed because the symptoms of sleep apnea are similar to other sleep conditions, such as insomnia, chronic fatigue, syndrome, and more. So here are some of the initial signs of obstructive sleep apnea. And obstructive sleep apnea is um, the one where the upper airway is obstructed. In other words, your upper airway closes when you fall asleep, closes temporarily, and that's what causes you to uh, not breathe and get up gagging and feel tired the next day and that sort of thing. So here are some of the initial signs. First of all, loud and persistent snoring. That's probably the number one uh, symptom of sleep apnea. Number two, uh, restless sleep with frequent tossing and turning in bed, and your, your bed partner would be able to tell if you're doing that. Snoring interrupted by frequent pauses when it seems that the sleeper has stopped breathing. So again, with obstructive sleep apnea, you stop breathing temporarily while you're sleeping. Also gasping and choking, as I mentioned before, and that's when you're gasping and choking for breath because you're not getting any air. So here are some other symptoms. Uh, first of all, pauses in breathing, which severely impact the quality and quantity of sleep. So what will happen is um, when you're not breathing regularly during sleep, the next morning you'll have excessive daytime lethargy or fatigue and reduced energy and that sort of thing. So you'll just feel tired during the day. Um, other, another uh, symptom of obstructive sleep apnea is quick and unexplained weight gain. Um, so the chronic sleep disturbance that is associated with sleep apnea eventually impacts a functioning of two important appetite-related hormones, ghrelin and leptin, and you've probably read about this in the, the media recently. Uh, very interesting. So what happens is the patient becomes irrational in terms of their eating um, because these appetite-related hormones, ghrelin and leptin, are no longer suppressed. So what else? Um, what are the other symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea? Well, there's also sore throat, headaches, and dry mouth in the morning. Irritability and depression for obvious reasons because you're not sleeping well. Forgetfulness, problems with concentration, which are after effects of severe sleep disturbance. How about in children? Well, it's estimated that 1 to 10 percent of children are affected by sleep apnea in the United States. Most of these are between two and eight years old. Um, some of these symptoms are similar to adults, um, but you have other ones as well. Heavy sweating during sleep, for example, nightmares pulling into the chest in younger children, adopting strange positions during sleep like the mouth open, a feeling of confusion upon waking, irritability, obesity, and all of these are related to not getting enough sleep. And first of all, not getting enough oxygen while you're sleeping because your airway is closed. Second of all, the lack of, uh, of air or of oxygen getting in causes you to not sleep well. How about in women? Well, women who have sleep apnea have similar symptoms with men, but they are often misdiagnosed because they report non-specific complaints such as sleeplessness, depression, lethargy, tiredness, headaches in the morning. And there's also some other things that are specific to, to women. So here are some risk factors. Um, the area of fat distribution in women is important for increasing the risk in women um, who tend to gather excess fat more in the lower section of the airway tract. So that's something important to keep in mind that's different between women and men. Also, if women have neck size more than 16 inches, they're more likely to have obstructive sleep apnea. Also, consumption of excessive amounts of alcohol, just as with men, and high blood pressure as with men as well. Here's something different though. The risk increases by three and a half times for women in the menopausal and postmenopausal age group. In other words, if you're above 50 years old, uh, you're much more likely to have sleep apnea. Uh, and there's also something called the polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, when you have that, the risk may increase by four times. 
So how about in men? Well, similar to women, um, but a little bit different here. So as opposed to 16 inches if for women, the neck size of more than 17 inches for men is a risk factor. Um, reduction of space in the front of the mouth that's caused by a receding chin is also a, a risk factor. And uh, anatomical defects like cranial facial deformities um, and also stress-induced rise in cortisol le levels. Now how about central sleep apnea? Well, the difference between obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea is that with central sleep apnea, um, the the um, cessation of breathing or the stoppage of breathing during sleep is not caused by an obstruction in the upper airway. It's caused by a defect in your brain sending a signal to your body to breathe. So your brain actually doesn't send that signal for you to breathe and that's why you stop breathing. Um, so I, I mentioned the obstructive sleep apnea symptoms and here are some symptoms of central sleep apnea. First of all, tiredness, daytime sleepiness, headaches in the morning. Swallowing problems is something that's a little bit different. Um, a change of voice also and numbness throughout the body. So the first three, tiredness, daytime sleepiness, and headaches are very similar to obstructive sleep apnea. The next three are specific to central sleep apnea. And one of the prime differences in the symptoms between the two types is that patients affected with central sleep apnea hardly snore. So that's a key difference. If you're feeling really tired during the day, um, if you're feeling uh, lethargic, you have headaches in the morning and that sort of thing, but you're not snoring, it, it's possible, although uh, central sleep apnea is actually quite rare, it is possible that you have that, so that's something to look into. So in conclusion, loud and persistent snoring is perhaps one of the most easily identified symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea. Therefore, prevention of sleep apnea should ideally begin with early treatment of snoring before it worsens into a more serious sleep disorder. So if you do have really loud, persistent, earth-shattering kind of snoring, uh, it might be an indication that you do have obstructive sleep apnea, and it's well worth getting checked out uh, by a doctor or a sleep specialist uh, if you do have that. So if you need more help with your sleep apnea, please do visit my free website. It's uh, apneatreatmentcenter.com. That's www.apneatreatmentcenter.com. As I mentioned before, there's tons of information on there that's completely free. Um, Cutting-edge new sleep apnea treatments that most family doctors don't even know about, um, and also that don't involve using CPAP. Um, there's also information on there about how to get uh, diagnosed, whether it be diagnosed through an at-home diagnostic kit or through a sleep center. There's lots of information on that, how to get support, and much, much more. So please do check out my website, and if you have any comments, uh, please leave them below. Thanks a lot.